Now, storing a different type of data is almost like storing a variable with a different type of data. And you can see that we've got a really extensive list of data inside here. Now, through the tutorials that I'm going to be taking you through, we're not going to be focusing on lots of different types of data, but they're for you to play around with and match them to your suitability when you go on and develop uh, further applications. Now, the ID, remember, is a number that auto-increments to give each uh, row a unique value. And you'll see how that works in a moment if you don't quite understand it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this as a type int because it's an integer. You can also have things like tiny int, small int, medium int, int big int. So they're all different types of uh, numeric uh, data values. Decimal, float, double as well. So I'm going to choose int for this. You can even choose something like uh, small int or medium int. However, if you expect say a hundred users on your website this is fine however if you're going to be taking into the millions then you're going to need to stick with int okay so lengths values we don't need to worry about default we don't need to worry about in this case because id is going to be incrementing the two we need to focus on in this case are the index now remember i said that primary keys are the, is the field or the column that's you the unique uh, column so we have specified unique column this is the unique number column and now we can tick auto increment and this allows us to every time we create a record we are incrementing this value so it start at zero by default um, and then when you create a record you'll have value one then two then three so you, you'll never have uh, this will never equal zero so let's come along to username and password. Now, obviously, we don't want to store a username or a password as just int. Um, but what we do want is varchar. Now, varchar stands for variable character. So what we can do here is we must specify a length and a value. Whereas in here, oh, let's just get rid of that. Whereas in here, we didn't. So a username would typically be, say, no more than 30 characters. So we can specify this as 30. Password exactly the same. It might be it might be less than 30 characters, but this is something you're going to have to specify in your program. Let's say you were to create a user user login system, you'd have to say you know give a max length to your text field and check inside PHP if the password specified or the username specified weren't bigger than 30, because anything bigger than 30 attempting to be written into this table is going to be cut off. If we we were to create a um, password that was 32 characters it would end up um, getting rid of the last two characters and would just end up with 30. So there's nothing else we need to set for the username and password in this case. We can set default values, but because we already want these, always want these to be specified, there's no need. Default just means you can specify a, a default value if this isn't, if no data is specified to be written. So for example, we could create a field on the end here called um, stay logged in. And this might be equal to uh, one or zero, depending on whether the user wants to be logged in. But by default, it might be zero, if that makes sense. So now what we do is we come down and we click save. Now what you can see is that we've created now um, a, a table here called users. And we've got a uh, number one in here to show that we've got one table. So let's click back on this table so we uh, can have a look inside. Now you see we've got the information uh, outlined here for us in a table. You can see the ID is underlined, which means it's a primary key. And we've got our type here. So you can see int is a ma is a uh, length of 11, so a length of 11 digits of integer data. This might be considered a bit too much, but like I said, if you were going to go into, say, millions of users, this is what you'd specify. Otherwise, you could go for something smaller. Uh, you've got uh, varchar30, and oh, we didn't change the password. I've just noticed we've kept this as an int. So this is a good um, time to show how we're going to edit some of our values. You can check each value that you want to edit and perform an operation underneath here. So for example, at the moment, I just want to edit password, and I'm going to click on this change thing here. It's a little pencil. So now it's given me just this password on its own, where I can change the type of it to varchar, and I can come down, and I can click save. Okay, so that's saved now that you can see it's updated that. We've got everything uh, in here. Um, oh, you can also individually uh, edit each one. So you can see that we've got extra here, we've got auto increment. Now, how do we go about inserting some data 
into this table because at the moment we've got the table but we've got no data now this would usually be done for PHP if you were say registering users you'd be inserting this data from PHP once the form has been checked for example you'd insert the username and password however we can do it manually from uh, PHP my admin if we wish to do so so I'm going to click on insert and I'm going to scroll along a bit and ID we can leave blank because remember this is an auto incremented field we can specify it being left blank and it will automatically update for us we've got username and password so let's enter a username and let's enter a password what we can also do is specify the amount of rows we want to uh, insert so we can say restart insertation with 40 rows for example but for now I'm just going to insert the data Alex and password and I'm just going to click go